What's going on, boxing fans? John Williams here at the distance. Got a prediction video for you guys. Um, actually, I'm going to address this first. I've been getting a lot of messages for fancy matchups, and I'll get to them kind of when I get a chance to. I've been working so much lately, it's not even funny. But anyway, I've been getting a lot of fancy matchups, but the thing with fancy matchups is I don't do matchups that could still potentially happen now. So that's the reason that there's some fa fancy matchups that I've never done. Because, you know, some matchups are, are go going to happen. You know, Mosley Mayweather was somewhat different, but I was a little sketchy about doing that one. And so forth and so on. You know, um, I, yeah, because I get, I, I got in, um, just a few matchups that that either can still happen or more than likely will happen so you know I'm not gonna do those kind of matches I'm gonna pretty much do everything based on fancy whatever but anyway I'm back here the distance haven't done a prediction video in a while I might be a little bit rusty but hey you know this is what I do and you know and thanks for everyone who subscribed to me during my short, you know, during my time off, whatever. So, anyway, let's get to it. IBF middleweight championship fight. Champion Sebastian Sylvester, Sylvester versus Roman Carmazin. Um, middleweight championship on the line. Um, you know, um, the middleweight division isn't necessarily stacked with a lot of talent, but you have good talent in that division. You got Felix Stern, you have Paul Williams, you have Sergio Martinez, you have, you know, possibly Kelly Pavlik, who knows if he's gonna move, you know, if he's gonna move back down. Um, Floyd Mayweather Jr. is another potential guy that can move up to 160. And on top of that, you have a really good and stacked 154 pound division full of men who could possibly become a top guy in the 160 pound division one of these days so you know 160 is going to I believe is going to be intriguing in the next couple of years or so we got some good prospects coming up as well so anyway Roman Carmenzen versus Sebastian Sylvester it's one of those young dog versus old dog type fights and you know the young dog or the young lion excuse me being Sebastian Sylvester and the old line being Roman Carmazin. See Roman Carmazin he's had many opportunities in his career to get himself up to elite status. He's had many opportunities he's faced. You know he has a loss against Javier Castellejo I believe is how you pronounce his name. Has a loss to Corey Spinks you know, on his first defense after he defeated Kasim Uma for the IBF Light Middleweight Championship in like 2005, first defense loss to Corey Spinks, and you know just has some, I think just had some devastating losses in his career. I think Castellejo, Castellejo, I believe is how you pronounce it. I said that again. You know that was a that was a pretty bad loss. Spinks pretty bad loss. The fight, the infamous crying fight, of course. You know, those pretty pretty bad loss and he actually ended up getting knocked the fuck out by practically an unknown fighter really got knocked the fuck out against him a couple years ago and you know he, he had a victory over Dionisio Miranda back in January on the first episode of Friday Night Fights he looked pretty good in the showing but but at the same time he had to really wonder with Roman Carmenzen can you know his current trainer Freddie Roach? What can he do to help him win this fight? But with Roman Carmazin, he's a good, he's a pretty solid fighter. He's a solid fighter. I like, I like how he, I like how he uses his jab to set up his hook combinations. But at times he leads in with hooks. But I think in the 160 pound division, I do believe that Roman Carmazin throws some of the best hook combinations you know he can throw and those hook combinations are so short and crisp and 
and sometimes and sometimes very accurate. And I like how he how he sets up his hook, and sometimes he doesn't set up the hook. In this specific fight against Sylvester, I don't think that Carmazin needs to stand in front of Sebastian Sylvester because Sylvester has that tight guard and he swings for the fences at times. In this specific fight, Roman Carmazin has to time Sylvester and time him well with hooks. Time him with the, I'd say the, he predominantly uses the left to set up, to set up the roundhouse right at times. Time him with the right hand and also move around a lot. I think, but the problem with Carmazin is Carmazin at times stands in front of his opponents. In this specific fight, he has to fight the same way he fought Dionysio Miranda. He has to pretty much stand there. He has to use his jab and utilize it to the best of his advantage. Utilize the jab, set the hook, um, and use the jab to create space in this specific fight. In particular, you know, um, I do think he does need to. I think he does need to throw a few hooks and sneak some hooks in. And also, Roman Carmazin does a good job of sneaking in the left uppercut. And the question is, will that left uppercut be there with the defense of Sebastian Sylvester? Will his hook be there with kind of that tight guard of Sebastian Sylvester? And in this specific fight, I think that timing is the key for Roman Carmazin to win the fight. I think timing is that main weapon because when sometimes when Sylvester throws, he throws a little too wide. He'll throw too wide and he exposes himself. He exposes himself to a counter to a counter hook most of the time. So really countering and countering effectively can win Roman Carmen's in the fight. Sebastian Sylvester is taking on a mean Asakinen, um loss and won against him. B Giovanni Lorenzo to be the IBF middleweight champion and you know has a loss earlier in his career to Felix Stern and he fought somebody I can't th somebody else I can't think of at the top of my head at the moment but I'll probably know after this video but in this specific fight Sebastian Sylvester really has to cut off the ring against Roman Carmazin I think if he cuts off the ring and takes the offense away from Carmazin I think he can confuse him I think he has to, I think that that Sylvester has to set him up using the jab and has to set and kind of try to use the jab to, and use the legs to cut off the ring see when Sylvester moves side to side when he moves laterally you kind of see short steps I think that he needs to use the jab and take wide, much wider steps and back Carmen into the ropes because if you back Carmen in, into the ropes and cut him off he doesn't really do anything so if he can and also it takes his offense away and also go to the body I think he does need to go to the body with Carmen being 37 who's 37 years old 37 38 years old I do think he needs to go to the body try his best to take the legs away because you know your legs at 38 is not the same as your legs at 30 years old you know and and with some boxers they say the first thing that goes out are the legs and I do think that Sebastian Sylvester has to go to the body in this fight I think it's required that he goes to the body in this fight and and also you know when he goes down to the body try you know try to set up some shots up top and this could win him win him the fight if he can outwork him you know and go to the body in this specific fight there's a lot that I want to say about this fight but I don't have enough time to say it um, because you know I'm just I'm very opinionated on the sport but I'm gonna go with one thing I think about with Sebastian Sylvester that I didn't mention is when you jab at him he stops you know he doesn't do anything he stands there when you jab at him but I do think in this specific fight if Sebastian Sylvester can cut off the ring and outwork Carmazin, he'll take this fight and I'm going with Sebastian Sylvester by a late knockout probably in the ninth tenth round but anyway thanks for watching that was the distance peace